Hi Josh, um, I guess um, you are my last um, uh, interview that I'm holding. Um, I've probably saved, you could argue, the best and the youngest to last. Um, Serious though, it's great to have somebody um, that is going to be the new generation of SME builders going forward to be able to talk through, to get your your views, see it through 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 your vision in terms of how you see the market. Um, um, and what I'd like to do is to, to, to cover two sort of key areas, one being customer profile and the other one being technology. And I'd like to hand over to Tom Martin. Uh, hi, Josh. Um, we've mentioned new ways of working and technology, etc. How on earth do you and your team keep up to date with all this? And secondly, what would you suggest is the best approach for us to work with our key suppliers in sharing this with you and the team? It's a very hard thing to stay on top of technology and construction because projects are, the, the goal of, of building is to build whatever you're building. People think less and less about sort of how, how that process gets done and just focus on the end result of, I've got to get this built, I've got to get this built. So uh, from, from our side, there's a lot of layers to try and convince people that, it's, that you need to fix the process first. And then from the supplier side, it's, it's accepting that some customers will have their own different systems. There isn't one overarching system that runs everything. So if I say, look, I need it in this format, or I need you to use this system, it's you being able to sort of understand how that system works um, without particularly, I don't need extra resistance from that. So I'm almost putting a little bit more pressure on you guys to say, uh, specifically project management so softwares, they're used and they're becoming more and more important. So we need you guys to actually accept and go, we know the system, we know how it works from our perspective because there are uh, supplier and subcontractor elements to these and going, yeah, we've got somebody who knows how to use it, that's fine, no problem, we'll load everything up the way you need to, rather than saying, ah, no, mate, we, we don't use that, we'll only email you the stuff. And that's just, it's that approach of um, staying with and, and following the, the sort of the, the technology advancements. Thank you. I'm gonna hand over now to Chris Barnett. Hi Josh, it's been really interesting. I'm really interested in your passion for technology. You mentioned quite a few, some that are really working now, some that you anticipate in the future. But what, what technology do you think will have the biggest impact in the building industry in the next five years? Great question. That's a very good one. Next five years. Um, so in the next five years, uh, it's, it's eliminating uh, system and process or, or changing the way that system and process is, is sort of documented by uh, people on site. Um, so at the moment, there's uh, a lot of, uh, uh, if I put it this way, so uh, America and uh, Australia are significantly more advanced in the way that they use software in construction to the UK. For some reason, the UK has stuck with the old fashioned way of, we like using pen and paper or emails. Um, and the, the, the way that Australia and America do that, there's a lot of funding behind uh, project management softwares, on the basis that the, if you can make your site run more efficiently, you can finish quicker. If your site runs more efficiently, chances are you make slightly more money, and more importantly, you make less mistakes. I mean, it's, in, in my world, uh, we lose profit based on mistakes. How many times is there something that could have been avoided? You know, was there a check that should have been done? Was there a report that something could have told us to say that we're gonna run out of something because, um, case in point, that there was a, uh, you ran out, ran out of uh, cement, you know, if there would have been a meter reading on that uh, cement thing that automatically told you that you were gonna run out because it knew how many more bricks you needed to lay, could have solved your problem straight away. It would have just alerted you and said, you know, you need to order X amount of more. In fact, it may not even need us to tell you. It would have just automatically delivered another load ready to go and nothing would have changed. So it's that sort of uh, using the data we have around us to help make our jobs more efficient. And essentially the overarching thing is, is project management softwares. Fantastic. That's really interesting. Really interesting. Um, Rebecca. Hi, Josh. Um, how do you go about pulling together the specification for a £20 million pound home um, and what right, research is done to do this? <laughs> we we'll make it up as we go along. Um, uh, so with the, with the large value homes, there's uh, 
normally at least an architect and a, an interior designer. So if, if we're going from a, a sales perspective uh, and the properties are development led, you'll have an architect and an interior designer who will be specifying product and material. Um, weirdly, it then comes through to us to then sort of value engineer it and actually that's where um, we start to look at our suppliers and, and you know, when I'm saying to them, I want this product, this is what's been specified, I love it when they come back and say, oh, that's a great product, but actually that's so out of date. You know, we've got this new product, it may be slightly more expensive, slightly less expensive, but it's just better for whatever specific reason. The problem that we find with the designer side is they're very stuck in their ways. I mean, so they'll give you the same specification over and over and over again without changing anything. Because they, they uh, you know, it, it takes a certain sort of interest. I mean, is the architect, does he care about plasterboard? Probably not. Does he care about other things, you know, and sort of the aesthetics and the design? He may be more interested in the sort of the glazing side, but, and he'll miss elements. So when I'm speaking to suppliers who are theoretically specialists in their field, we, we really appreciate it when they come back and they give us that sort of feedback and tell us that our, what we're installing is potentially out of date or we could be doing a, a better product <coughs> without necessarily costing us more money. That's, uh, thank you, Josh. Um, I think we've probably run out of time now. Can I, can I just ask everyone to show their appreciation for Josh and his time today? Thank you, mate.